Welcome to another lesson of Japanese 101. Today, we're gonna learn about... The Volitional! Hey, thank you for the resub, Claire. Or for the sub, sorry, that's your first sub, isn't it? <laughs> um, for a second, I thought it was a resub. Thank you so much, welcome! Arigato, subsdekurete! Today, we're doing Volitionals. What are Volitionals? That is exactly the question we're gonna to answer today. So first of all, um, let's look at this terminology, volitional. Why is it called a volitional, okay? So um, you may know some words that align with that. And I was gonna say, the only thing that's ever stick with me around the state. Nice, that's perfect. I'm glad to hear that. First of all, we know a word that is um, volition, right? What is a volition? A volition is like a wish you have, a will, something that you want, right? So in that regard, right, a volition is like, a will or, you know, sort of a um, an incentive kind of like that, like a will or a volition, some wish, something that you want to do, essentially, okay? And the volitional is a conjugation for verbs, for all verbs, that basically lets us express, ju express just that. So in English, masho, yeah, exactly. So in English, uh, we would generally have Something like a let's kind of thing, right? Let's do something. Let's dot dot dot. That's often how it will be translated in English. It's some sort of let us or let's, okay? So today we're gonna talk about the volitional, how to form it, how to use it, some examples, and as a extra, Miyano Hike, yes. Thank you for the resub. I saw four months, welcome back. Yo! Miyano Hype. Miyano Hype. Yes. Thank you, Takumi. If you're wondering, my TTS person is called Takumi. You can refer to him as Takumi. Um, he's just recently started working for me. So we're still figuring things out. But yeah, I've contracted um, I've contracted Takumi and uh, he's been reading messages ever since. Let's. So we're going to do today. We're going to talk about the volitional and then we're going to use it for making a specific form actually that I'm going to introduced to you. Um, this form comes up all the time, so I thought it was good to introduce that. Takumi was going places. Yeah, he's been he's been hard at work. He's been hard at work for sure. So you already know the drill. Whenever we discuss um, these sort of things, generally we look at formation first. So let's do that. So how do we make this form? Formation. Here as well, the old uh, but proven system, hey, no-brainer, of looking at verb classes, okay? So we're going to look at Ichidan verbs first. Then we're going to look at Godan verbs. <laughs> Thank you, Hirumi, for the 10 bits. Bitto arigato! We're going to look at the Ichidan verbs first, and then the Godan verbs, and then the exception verbs. And we're also going to look at mas, though it is nothing too crazy. So there you go, Ichidan. So Ichidan verbs, same old, same old, okay? You take a verb, you take it into its stem form. Ichidan verbs are called Ichidan they're because they only correspond to um, one row uh, of the kana table. So there's only one stem, basically, is what that means, right? Ichidan. Um, I explain this every so often, but Ichidan, the dan, right? The dan in Ichidan actually means the rows of the kana table. So when you have a kana table, you have a, i, U, e, and o, right? Hope you know this much. If you <laughs> this much, you ought to know. By the way, in every lesson I do, at least you know kana, right? That's very important, obviously. Uh, five rows. Ichidan just means we always kind of stay here in the u and just get rid of the the the, the trailing kana. So for ichidan verbs, let's pick a random ichidan verb. Um, maybe one that we haven't used before. I'm kind of notorious for using taberu all the time. So maybe we can actually find um, something else. Um, what's another ichidan verb would be something like, let's be mean and use kaeru, but actually kaeru, which is uh, kaeru, which is uh, this one to change, which is actually an ichidan verb. Um, so there you go. Taberu wa ii. I know, I like taberu too, but you know, sometimes you gotta mix it up. So here's an interesting one because um, you may know um, kaeru, which is to go home, which is a godan verb, but this one here, um, kaeru, is actually an ichidan verb. Oh, oshieru is also nice, I guess. 
食べるの好き、のが好き、の好き。Usually you would add the が、のが好き。教える。Actually, 教える might be better because it fits the, it fits the theme, huh? 教える。教える。Let's go with、um, 教える。To teach. Good, good choice, Daniel. I, I agree. This one is probably good. Just to mix it up because I always go with the other one. So, what is、uh, stream with ketchup? So, take care, Rock. But thanks for saying hi, though. So, with each down verbs, we do the same as we always do. We have the verb, or rather,、um, yeah, we have a verb. And obviously, it ends in some sort of、uh, r, right? o s h i e r u ends in r. And then we just get rid of r and we add something. This is hopefully a familiar pattern at this point. This is sort of the repeating theme. Make a stem, add something. That's kind of how all conjugations work in Japanese. I mean, and also in other, other languages as well, to be fair. For the volitional, what we need to add is actually yo, a long yo, an elongated yo. So we have yo, and that's a kind of an ugly yo.、Um, we have yo, and we elongate it with u. So yo, tabe yo, or Oshie yo, okay.、Um, the example that we chose was Oshieru, which、uh, is basically like this. Oshie,、um, I think Eru is the trailer. Yes, so Oshieru, right? Eru. So, what we would do is we would get rid of the l and we would add yo. Oshieyo, oshieyo. Okay, that's the conjugation for the non. This is non.、Uh, not non past, sorry. This is not the polite version. This is just the normal, you could say, casual version. We're gonna look at the polite version in a bit. That one's easy though. So, oshieyo, right? Oshieyo, oshieyo. Let's teach somebody something, right?、Uh, for example, Oshieyo, you could say, is something like when you've made up your mind to teach someone something, you could say this to sort of initiate the action. You mean like, um, Mazu wa otagai ni namae o oshieyo. First, let us teach each other our names, or let us tell each other our names, right? Mazu wa means as a first thing, and then otagai ni means、um, mutually, each other. Otagai ni. And then namae o oshieyo just means let's. Tell names. Let's teach names, right? If that makes sense. So、um, you could have something like, you know, blah blah, tagai ni namae o oshieyo. And you already realize maybe also that namae namae o. You can actually just add. So this is namae. This means name. Anana chan konnichiwa. Name and oshieru is generally transitive, and this transitive. Uh, nature tends to stay consistent when you go into the volitional. So nothing really changes about transitivity. Verbs that used to be transitive are still transitive, verbs that aren't still are not.、Um, and you can have volitionals of both transitive and intransitive verbs. If you don't know what transitivity is, I have made a lesson on that. I'm not going to go too much into it.、Uh, a transitive verb can take a direct object, and an intransitive cannot. Um, it's not super crucial for today's lesson since volitional is more general. It just kind of applies to all verbs, but you should still know about it. So, yeah. Namae o oshieyo. Let's, you know, let's teach each other our names. Otagai ni namae o oshieyo. So, that would be one example of the usage here. And again, right, you mostly translate to something like, ah, let's. It has to do with sort of, you know, initiating an action. Oshieyo. You can't have.、Um, I'm Pink Hobo. <laughs> Hello, Pink Hobo.、Uh, Claire, make sure that you don't get too confused with this. So,、um, when you have volitional, okay, you cannot add、uh, te form to it. So, this is no good. You cannot just make te form a volitional. And also, a volitional. <laughs> Elevex, hello. A volitional is not generally conjunctive. What that means is. I can generally not add another verb here. Okay? That is generally not how it works. Kudasai would count as another verb. So we cannot do oshie yo kudasai, oshie yo te kudasai, all of that. That does not work, sadly.、Um, also, oshie、um, yo is. Imagine it as like an initiation, sort of an action, so like, let's do that. Not like 
let's please do you can't really ask that of something you can't ask of someone to um, do an action like volitionally or kind of like that you can ask them to do it but not like in this form so generally you can't combine kudasai and the volitional form that's sadly not, not how it works okay for godan verbs okay godan we are finally learning the last stem by the way are you excited i'm pretty excited Masho. How is this different from Masho? It's not. Masho is simply the volitional of mas. That is all it is. Um, we're finally learning the last stem of Godan verbs, okay? So, quick recap. Um, Godan verbs, right? Five stems. Once again, I'm going to draw the kana table. One, a, two, i, four, uh, three, uh, a, i, u, five, e, uh, sorry, four, e, five, o. I was running out of space here. One, two, three, four, five. Now, what are all the stems that we've learned? Okay, so we've learned uh, the negative stem. That's a utau. We can use utau as a uh, thing, as a um, <laughs> is cheating. Yeah, we can use utau as an example later on. We've learned the negative stem. That is a. So we've done that. We have learned the e stem. That is the mas stem for the polite form. So um, to use utau as an example, the negative would be utawanai. You can hear an a sound. The polite one would be utaimas, utaimas, right? Utaimas with an e. We have learned u. That's just the dictionary form utau. We have learned the e a few lessons ago with the imperative stem utai sing, and now we're learning the last one, which is the volitional. So this is our last stem, and then we have learned all five stems of godan verbs, and that's all that you'll ever need to know. Um, every other conjugation, we've learned most of the basic conjugations at this point. So yeah, tabeyo and tabemasho are just different ways of saying the same thing mostly. Let's eat versus, let's eat versus let's do the eating. Uh, no, they are, um, the thing about polite forms is that politeness does not change meaning. It just changes politeness. So tabeyo and tabemasho mean exactly the same thing, but they're at different levels of politeness. So they are not at all different in meaning. They are just different in polite uh, politeness level. So you would use them in different contexts. Um, I don't know if you're like some languages have politeness differences. For example, in uh, in German, right? When you say um, you, you can say it two ways. You can say du, but you can also say see, and uh, see would then mean the same, but just being polite, right? So yeah. Anyways. Never mind. Oh, I'm confusing Suru and Mas. <laughs> yeah, there we have to be careful there. So, fifth and last stem of Godan verbs. How do we make it? Well, I've already sort of given away that it has something to do with O. So, possibly that is where we're going, right? So, what do we do? We have a uh, vowel shift. So, we have generally, we'll have a verb. So, the verb will kind of look like this. And it will end in an U sound, right? U. Uh, u sound, u. I should say u, not u. U is more like English, but u. It will end in an u sound. Now we just take that u sound and we shift it to an o. Okay, so shift. Basically, I'm gonna do like this: shift to o. Okay, and then basically just elongate at that point with another u to elongate. Looks complicated, is not. Believe me. Okay. Think of the process of going from a to o. Okay, we'll illustrate with examples to make this more clear. From a to o. So, okay, let's take the example of utau. Utau um, looks like this. So I'm gonna try and like draw these kanji, which basically would look like this. Um, and then I think it's right. Yes. Okay. So a could be. So, utau looks like this, right? Utau, this means to sing. Um, the furigana would be like, uta, u, utau, utau, to sing. Okay, I'm gonna get rid of that for space reasons. Utau means to sing, like to sing a song. Now, this sound here is a... Why did I say ah? I'm sorry, guys. Ignore that. It's obviously an u to o, okay? Because all verbs end in an u sound, not an a sound. Um, we have an u uh here, so basically all we need to do is shift that to o, okay? Um, so that's pretty straightforward. Let's do that. So we would have the same thing again. Um, that would be one stroke here. Uta o, okay? O. 
And then what did I mark here? Okay, elongate with another U. Uh. So that one always is the same. So this one will always be there. You'll always have the U uh at the end. Utao, utao, let's sing. Utao, utao ze. Let's sing, everyone. Utao. Which, by the way, uh, after the lesson, I have another community reward for more karaoke. So I'll activate that uh, when we get to that. Utao. Okay, we change from U uh to O. Uh, and we add another U uh to elongate. Okay, when you learn the kana, you'll learn that U uh often elongates O sounds. Okay, so for example, in the kanji for king, which is like this, which is O, we spell it like this. O, U. But we read it as O, so basically the same as you would like in katakana, would look like this. O, right? Alright, so it's an elongating, so an elongating sound. Elongating the vowel. So, utao, let's sing more examples. This one needs a bunch more examples, I would assume. So, let us do that. Um, just so we get a bit more comfortable with it. Remember, changing from an u to an o sound. The consonant will generally stay the same. Um, in this case, we just had utao. There is no consonant, so just we take we change the vowel only. So, u to o. But, if we have a consonant, such as in kaku. Kaku means to write. Okay, so uh, let's do... Kaku. Kaku looks like this. Kaku to write. Okay. We have a ku. So if we shift that to its o, we keep the consonant the same. It would be kako. <laughs> Yomo. Yes, exactly. Um, it would be ko. So it would look like this. Ka ko. And lastly, adding the u to elongate. Kako. Kako. Kako, let's write. Kako, let's write, right? Kako. All right, one more example. Um, just get rid. Oops, yeah, that was a bit. That was a bit, uh, a bit much there. Last example. Um, pick another ending sound. Uh, for example, yobu. Okay, yobu means to call someone, to say someone's name or to call someone. Also, call someone on the phone. Depends on the context. Okay, so uh, yobu generally looks like this. Yobu, okay. Um, yobu, yobu. If we have bu, what would that be? Well, bu, uh, if we take, we keep the consonant, that's a bu, a bu consonant. So um, we shift that to, um, would yoso become yoso, <laughs> yoso, it would, yes. The same way as o becomes o. And, um, like, um, you also have O, <laughs> which then O. <laughs> so, yes, they are, they are consistent. How do you pronounce this? Yoso, yoso, yoso. It is just a long O. It's a bit weird, but that's just what it is. They are consistent. Um, yobu becomes, bu becomes bo. So, yobo, all right? So, let me make this thing here. So, we basically end up with... Yobo, uh, bo obviously being like this. Uh, <laughs> I'm an idiot. I wrote bo the <laughs> I wrote like a mirrored version of bo. Yobo, yobo. Ohayou gozaimasu. Hey, Jacob. Hi, ginki desu. Yobo. Let's call yobo. So I hope you get the you get the gist of it, right? Um, we've done many, many conjugations now. Yoso, yes. YouTube no hito da yo ne, so desu, hai. Eh, to, ma, game grammar, YouTube no, sono, game grammar no doga, yatte mas. Ma, demo, genzai wa ne, sono, YouTube no, YouTube no doga wa zenbu ko, sono, hai shin no, eh, to, archive nan da gara, ne, <laughs> sore, ma, ne? Demo, demo, ima wa ne, video, video tsukutte mas. Yeah, ima genzai, hai. Famous YouTuber, indeed. Hey, Hiromi. Oh, look, you're a number one cheerer. <laughs> Yobimashita ga? Yes. I did not, but sure, here you are. Okay, so this is how you make the volitional for ichida and godan verbs, all right? Keep that in your mind. Vowel shifts, we've done many vowel shifts, so you should be familiar with the concept. Uh, if you're not, um, go watch the other episodes. We've done it so many times now, but it's always kind of the same thing whenever we do like negative or whatever. Um, next up, we're gonna do is we're gonna look at well, how do I make this polite? 
Um, and a lot of people in chat have already done it, and I've already mentioned it. The mass, uh, the volitional of mass, okay? All we need to look at is mass itself, which looks like this. Mass, okay? And we just need to know that, well, this turns into masso, okay? Which is a bit uncommon um, in terms of, like, how it happens. Masho, okay? You just have to remember. Masho. Masho. Just remember that. It's not hard. It's just the one, right? Just remember the mas form. Um, but, luckily, you know that all the polite forms that already end in mas can now just be changed to masho. So, what do we have in chat? Benkyo shimasho. Why? Because it's shimas turning into shimasho. Okay? So, really no big deal. Anything that you can turn into mas form, you can turn into masho. Keep in mind, though, that you do it in this order, okay? You do step one, change to mas, okay? Change to whatever, and then mas, okay? And then step two is mas to masho, okay? Uh, mas to masho, okay? No, don't try and do it the other way around, where you go into volitional first, and then try and make a polite. That will end up in confusion. In, in confusion. Yameyo. Yeah. Yamena. Yameru akinai de shou. Mada. Kore kara da kara ne. Koji Scorpion. Thanks for the follow. Follow. Arigato. Just notice that I miss an E there. I'm the master of spelling. Have, I'm not sure if I've told you. Um, so yeah, do it in this order. Make it polite first and then change mas to masho. Don't try and do like, okay, uh, yobo, uh, yobo mas. You're gonna get confused, okay? This order, not the other. <laughs> the other doesn't work. Cheng! Koji! Thank you for the bit, uh, for the 10 bits. Bitto, arigato! Ima wa nihon ni sundere no. Ya, ima wa mada sono. Ima mo mukashi mo Swiss ni sundemasu. Hai. I live in Switzerland, not in uh, Japan. Yes. Last one. Are the exceptions exception verbs exception time everyone um so we have because normal suru um suru we have to look at so what does suru turn into suru the old the old issue with suru and kuru what does suru turn into well suru just turns into shio okay um i'll make it red that's kind of an ugly she now I can't like make proper she anymore. Eh, it looks kind of ugly, but okay. Shiyo. Now here, we have to be a bit careful. This is not, okay, not the same as like sho. okay? Don't don't confuse these two. This is a small yo. I'll make it even smaller so that it's really clear. Make sure not to make this mistake. Shiyo. It's shiyo. Shiyo. Okay? And not sho. That's very important. This is kind of an easy mistake to make. Shio, benkyo shio. Let's study. Monosoku, ego no benkyo ni nariso. Follow sasete morai mashita. Ah, arigato. Hai. So desu ne. Nanka, eto, ego benkyo shite iru kata mo itsu demo. Eto, ma, nanika, shitsumon no aru toki wa, zono, zehi, inyoraku kite kudasai. Alright, suru, shio. Demo, ma, ego no bunpo ni tsuetu amari, zono, kuashiki nai no de, chotto, ano, ね、その勘弁してください。<笑>えー、できるだけ、えー、っと、できるだけ返事はします。するしよう。OK? えー、くる。On the other hand, くる。simply turns into、uh, こよう。OK? Um, こよう。I think I should be right there. Yeah, こよう。こよう、just being,、uh, let's, let's come or something like that.、Uh, yeah, こよう。Sometimes I have to like think if I'm <laughs> if I'm right, but yeah, but it is koyo. Koyo, let's come. Kind of like <laughs> freak. Not that one. Also, you'd use iku for that one. So, um, there you go. Yes, don't get confused with the kuru and iku. It's very different. In um, you know, in the West we come, but in in Japan they go. <laughs> that one, it's an. Uh, do you usually like kuru without the kanji? Yeah, kind of. Uh, well, it's sort of... No, it's like half and half. Um, the thing with kuru is that you will see it in kanji all the time, okay? So writing、uh, kuru in kanji is very common. 
very common to see this, super common. But um, when it, kudu is used as an auxiliary verb, it will almost always be in kana. So you're right, uh, I was wondering why you don't use it too often. Yeah, so I don't really use it too often, more out of habit at this point. I've always kind of written kudu and suru in their kana, though it is very common to see um, to see kudu in kanji. However, when it is used auxiliary as an auxiliary, it's almost never in kanji. That's sort of a thing. You will see like both. Um, so you'll you'll see both around, definitely. All right. Hey, you know what we've just done? We have just reached the point where we know all the formation. So let's look at some examples. And then I'll teach you a form that uses the volitional to express something else. So we're going to combine two things that we've learned already. And then learn something new from that. I know, right? So, uh, first, some examples, some example sentences with simple volitional forms. Example. Uh, for that, I'm gonna have to grab my text tool, and I'm gonna write, and we're gonna just choose Mado. I think I kind of like Mado as a font. Mado is pretty good. Just Mado. Uh, Mado regular. Mado bold. Yeah, bold is good. I'm I'm bold, not bald. I'm bold as a person, so we'll choose bold fonts as well. Um, how about, you know, what could we say? Whenever you want to like, you want to hype people up, volitional is the way to go. For example, how would I say like politely, let's eat dinner? Well, I would say something like, um, like, you go han. Oh, tabemashou, tabemashou. You can often accompany this with a fancy little exclamation mark. Um, in Japanese, by the way, the exclamation mark is often called bikkuri mark, uh, which is pretty cute because bikkuri means surprise or being like uh, being like scared by something. So bikkuri mark is like an exclamation mark. It has other names as well, but bikkuri mark is one of those. So um, you have eh, to, Let's eat dinner. Fairly simple. You go han tabemashou. I'm just going to uh, furiganize this for your convenience. <laughs> Aren't you lucky? Uh, so we have uh, you here. Let's try and fit this in. You go han o tabe. Uh, oops, it's just ta obviously because the be is always the part of the okurigana. So tabemashou. Bikkuri maku. Yes. <laughs> Bikkuri shita. It's not the prettiest of furigana, okay? But since I've said it so many times, I hope you've... Uh, uh, you got the you. Ah, uh, yeah. I was just like, my... All uh, right, I guess you could say you or whatever like that. Yeah, let's, we can do that. Um, okay, now my, my furigana are out of place. No. No. Just a moment, yeah. Ah, check out, check out. Uh, did we learn? Um, yeah, we did learn. Yeah, we did learn. What was it again? It was, uh, I forgot what it's read, but yeah, we did learn that yesterday. Uh, I guess it would be Yuhan. Yuhan wo. Ah, Bansan, right. Bansan. Saigo no Bansan. The last meal. Your last meal. Uh, yesterday? Oh, yeah. Uh, me and Pinch on the Discord server were doing some uh, Kotoba quizzes. What's another one? Okay. Uh, we could say something like, let's swim in the lake casually. Not politely this time. We would say like, um, Mizu. Mizumi. Uh, I guess it would, or de, I guess de would be better. Mizumi de oyogo. Or you could probably also use Mizumi oyogo. It kind of depends. I'm not sure. Both of these should both kind of like. Mizumi de oyogo. Let's swim in the lake. Okay. Oyogo. Why? Because you have um, oyogu. Okay, like this. And then you have um, the gu turns into go. Okay, and then we add u. So, oyo. Go u. Okay. Oyo go. That's the conjugation. Let's swim in the lake. Or, last one. Um, what would be another one? We could do something like, let's turn back time, which would be like, jikan wo uh, modo, modoro. <laughs> jikan wo modoro. Let's reverse time. Let's, let's, let's turn back time. I don't know if you ever need that, but you know, jikan wo modoro. Fairly simple, all right? Now, what I want to teach you, though, is another use of the volitional. We're going to combine two things that we know. All right. We're going to go. We're going to go deep now. We're going to go deep into 
um, our brains. I'm on board with that. Yes, me too. So, we're going to combine volitional. Let's forget this. We're going to combine volitional. And plus to plus suru. Ah, so um, this is an interesting one. To here is acting kind of like a quoting particle and kind of not. So um, we're going to use suru and shite, uh, iru, the progressive form. Okay, so suru and shiteiru. So to suru. Um, so we don't need to know the volitional, so we can do um, any kinds of volitionals. What this means then, by the way, is what we get is a formation which allows us to state that someone is about to do something. About to do something. Tabeyoto suru. Yeah, tabeyoto suru. That's good. Do, about to do, or plans to do. Plans slash wants to do. So, wants to, not as much as in like, um, tai or whatever. Like, it's not like tabetai means I want to eat. We haven't learned that one yet, but not like wants to do. It's more like you look at someone and you're thinking in your head, oh, he wants to do that. Or like, um, oh, he's about to do it. Like, he clearly has, like, he looks like he wants to do it. That's the sort of usage that it has. Wants to do. Okay. About to do or wants to do. Okay, this is very useful, happens, um, is used very often. Sort of a form you can use to make a judgment about someone. You can look at them and be like, uh, right? Oh, he's he's about to eat. He or she is about to eat. They are about to eat. Right, the good old taberu. Yeah, yeah. So it's easy to make examples with it, isn't it? So, talking about examples, let's try that, right? Um, for example, uh, I don't want to. I don't want to do this example with Tolbo. It means to jump. He's about to jump. No, this sounds. It's a bit. <laughs> um, how about something uh, like? Um, how about something like? Mainichi benkyo o sakeyo to suru. Yes, I try to escape from studying every day. Sakeru is kind of a pain to write, but uh, I can just use a text tool instead. We can do that. That's pretty good. Mainichi. Every day. Benkyo o sake o to suru. So, basically, every day, which is mainichi, right? Every day, benkyo means study. So, this is mainichi. Mainichi. Benkyo. Uh. Oh, sake o to suru. Uh, sakeru. Sake. Uh, I guess it's just one, so I don't have to use that much. Sake o to suru. So here we have to suru. So, uh, like, try to. Try to avoid. Sakeru means to avoid something. Try to avoid studying every day. Now, the problem here is with the phrasing, okay? When I say try to avoid studying every day in English, it sounds like I'm giving you an advice. It sounds like, hey, try to avoid studying. That's not what this means. This means that you, you're you talking about someone who's doing that, okay? Saint Otaku, thanks for the follow. Follow, arigato. So you're, 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 doing, you're making a statement about either yourself or someone else who's actually doing this. You're observing this thing tendency, this action, like, like, he'll try to avoid studying every day, like, something like that, like, or he avoids studying every day, like, as a habitual thing, okay, this is not, like, try to avoid studying every day, um, so, like, he, she, they, or I try to avoid studying every day, so this is, like, an observed, um, an observed sort of, um, action, an observed sort of tendency that you, that you see, that you, like, have noticed, okay, so that's the kind of the point with this um, o to suru, which I often call it o to suru because like volitional often has something with o. So with this volitional plus to suru, it is often have has to do with your perception of the situation. Okay. Um, you can use it for yourself, but also for other people. So basically, when you make an observation and you think like, oh, this is about to happen, 
or he's trying to do this every day, depending on like the tense, you can use this otosuru. Another one uh, would be, let's make another example, something like, um, something like, um, watashi no, let's do like, uh, watashi no, um, watashi no, um, keiki, let's do keiki, cake, keiki wo tabe, tabe yo to shita. What would that mean? Well, he, she, it, they were about to try and eat my cake. How dare they? Uh, I'm not going to hooliganize this, so you should learn what Well, taberu you also should know. This is not really, doesn't need hooligana. This kind of sounds like you're outraged. You're like, oh, that person tried to eat my cake. He was just about to eat my cake. And you can see that the conjugation of this form is pretty simple because it boils down to being able to conjugate suru. So if we want to put this whole thing in past tense, we put suru at the end in past tense. If we want to put it in progressive tense, like it's going on right now, right? Watashi no keiki wo tabeyou to shiteiru. He's trying, he, she, they, it, are trying to eat my cake right now. They're about to eat my cake. Then we do shiteiru or shiteru. If it's past, if it's already happened, like, oh, they're trying to eat my cake, past tense, tabeyou to shita. Anything goes, right? All the tenses we've learned so far apply to this as well. All you need to do, uh, all you need to know is that you basically just conjugate suru at the end to determine sort of the tense. Dimu ni iko to kimeta. How does this work? To uh, kimeru just means I've decided to do, right? So in this case with to um, kimeru, you can just think of it as to being like a quote, quoting particle, and kimeru is the thing that you're using as a quoting verb. It's a bit complicated with to. Like, to is a bit weird because it works in like, we call it, we always call it like quoting particle, but the way quotation works in Japanese is just very different from the way it works in Japanese. But basically, whenever you have an action and you're like quoting it with a verb, I don't know if, like, I'm, I'm basically in lack of a better word almost. With um with this to usage, but to kimeta just means I've decided that. So mainichi jimu ni iko to kimeta. I've decided that let's go to the gym every day. Kind of like that. Ayafumi san konnichiwa. Konnichiwa. So yeah, similar usage with tosuru. Um, but I would suggest that for this you just learn it as like a unit. So you just think of like. Volitional plus tosuru means, oh, someone's about to do something or they're trying to do something. Something like that. It's like about to happen. It's about to go down. It's about to go down. Kind of like that, right? Uh, tosuru. Volitional plus tosuru. When you recognize it. Oh, okay. Eve has told me what that means. Tabayo tosteru. Oh, they're trying to eat it. They're trying to eat it. They're about to eat it. So sort of blur the line between trying to do something and being about to do something, right? Um... Like this yotosuru, sort of Im implying that you see a person and they clearly look like they're about to do something, right? So in that regard, they're trying to do it. So they're really like attempting to do it right now. You can observe that they are. That's kind of how it goes. Right. There you go. We have now learned the volitional conjugation, which is, once again, I want to stress this. We have now learned all five stems of Godan verbs. So you're never gonna have to learn another stem again. If you've paid attention until now, if you've taken your notes, um, you basically have now completed all five stems plus the past tense slash te form. So you know all the basic conjugations of any verb that you'll ever need to know to make all other conjugations. We are essentially done with learning about stem forms. There are, n there are basically none more, okay? Theoretically. Um, you might see some other weird stuff. Everything that comes after this is just a matter of picking one of the stems that we know and attaching something new. That's all it's gonna be. Okay. Cake yo mamoro. Let's protect the cake. Yes. Mamoro ze. So there you go. This was a much quicker lesson. Um, but the volitional is also not super tricky, but it is very useful and definitely needs to be learned at some point. So we got it done. Now, I'm not 100% sure what we're going to do next week. Maybe. Uh, Himajin. Uh, hello, Himajin. And uh, Snowy Ice. Thanks for the follow. Follow, arigato. 
ケーキを守ろうとしても無駄だ。<笑> yeah. The, oh, we should maybe look at like Temo farms as well soonish.、Uh, good thing you brought that up. That's a good idea with the, with the Temo. Okay. Now, ladies and gents, that's all I have. Do you have any questions for now? Anything goes.、Um, preferably something that has to do with the lesson. If you don't have questions that have to do with the lesson, I will end the lesson and answer the questions. Like, it doesn't really matter. For now,、um, questions about the lesson itself, I generally tend to leave, into, leave in the VOD, whereas、um, ones that are completely separate don't really need to be in the VOD. So I'll just end the recording at that point. But yes, if you have questions, then go ahead. Anything goes, and I'll drink a zip of coffee. Maybe a negative example. Ah, so the negative is interesting because. Uh, volitional forms tend to theoretically have no negative. Okay?、Um, you could say mai is like the negative, tabe mai, but it's kind of fancy and not used anymore. Repeat everything, yes. Let's not. That's another thing. So you can say let's not do this in English, but in, in Japanese, you'd have to either use the opposite action or like phrase it completely differently. You cannot use the. You generally cannot use the volitional. For a, a negative, you, you just can't.、Um, so, when you want to say, like,、ah, let's not eat,、um, you would probably say, like, nai hou ga i or something like that. Like, tabe nai hou ga i. Like, it's better if we don't. That's what you would probably use. There is no、uh, straight up negative version of the volitional form. Does not exist. You could, again, you can argue that maybe the mai, like, tabe mai or, or um, um, what would be like, Yeah, something like that. But it's it's really not as common and barely will make you sound. If you assume that is the negative of the volitional, you'll sound really weird, so you shouldn't.、Um, it, it works differently. Yes. But good thing you asked. I almost forgot.、Um, I'm still at the phase of studying how to conjugate suru. Suru! Taberu, tsukuru, taberu, tsukuru, tari tu bitu wa. All right. Gonna drink another zip of coffee. <laughs> Zuru is the only verb you need, yes. Then I have all the Zuru, Zuru verbs, right? Hi, let's do it.